Good morning and welcome to the third day of the conference. Uh, today we are going to discuss two topics that in fact have come up again and again during previous meetings of the conference and I think they are very central to a discussion of arms control in the Middle East, which is the center, central subject of our conference. Uh, the first one, of course, is the Iranian uh, agreement or the, the potential Iranian agreement, which we haven't yet seen materializing. And views about it have come up during the conference. I myself, I might venture to say, uh, here and there in asides, I have argued that, in fact, uh, this is a good agreement, or at least relatively good agreement in terms of Israeli strategic interests, but I'll stop uh, uh, viewing or presenting my own views. So today we are going to discuss first the Iranian arms deal or nuclear deal, and secondly, the second topic of course is the nuclear weapon free zone or WMD free zone in the Middle East. And we are extremely fortunate to have three distinguished speakers that will open or discuss these two topics. First of all, we have General Yaakov Amidrol. We have known each other for many years. Uh, I'll, I, I think I, I'm not going to read all the bios of the three speakers because... because Leave it for funerals. It written, sorry? Leave it for funerals. <laughs> Leave it for funerals, okay. Uh, and uh, so I'll just say that uh, General Amidro served as a national security advisor to the Prime Minister of Israel and the head of the National Security Council for more than t two years. And before that, he served with the Israeli Defense Forces for 36 years uh, in various very high positions. Uh, so. Prof uh, so General uh, uh, Amidro will discuss Iran nuclear negotiations. Will it end in a deal? With a question mark. Thank you very much. Just for I the, hope to, just hear, to hear an just, exclamation mark. Yes, just for the facts, uh, I was the national security advisor for two years and seven months, and in this job you can't every day, don't, not just the months or so. It's, <coughs> By the way, longer than anyone before me. I don't know what will be in the future. Longer? Yes. No one in Israel did it more than two and a half years. Um, so this is about the facts. Now, I was asked a question, and I, I have to answer it. Um, if someone will force me to answer the question, I'll say probably yes. Probably because we speak about the future and we, we don't intend that we know what will happen in the future and it, just an assessment. Um, and again and again, when we speak about the future, we have the, um, we don't know, and we have those um, theoretical um, understanding that new, uh, if, uh, new uh, issues ma might affect the, the future and we don't know what will happen. But if we look at the Iranians, I think what happened today, really today in the negotiations, is something very interesting. The Iranians feel that the, the, um, although they need, and they really need an agreement to relieve the uh, sanctions and to um, rebuild their economy, they feel something very peculiar, that the Americans are eager to have an agreement more than the need of the Iranians. Although for the Americans there is no any need, and, and, and it's just a decision that was taken by the uh, administration to have an agreement because of the alternatives, because of many issues. There was an, an, a meeting in London a few days ago and someone who was an ambassador in Iran a few years ago said whatever will be the circumstances, the P5 plus 1 should take the road leading to an agreement with the Iranians. And I think that what happened in those days, these actual days, 
it's that the Iranians understand that they are facing negotiators which are eager to have an agreement above everything. And what they are doing now is like in the bazaar, we know it because we are living in the Middle East, you know, you go to the, to the uh, bazaar, the other side is offer you um, an, a price, you say no, you argue with him, then he said, this is my last. He said, okay, I'm going out. And you are going out of the, of the shop and the expectations are that he will run after you. And this is exactly what the Iranians are doing today. They are putting prices that they know they are not in the list of the, um, of the administration, hoping that the administration will follow because for the administration to have an agreement is the only option that they have. And I must say, it's not, of course, it's not only the Americans. They know that this is the, the policy of, of, um, of Russia, China, and maybe Britain, I'm not sure about it. Germany will follow whatever will be there. So what we are facing today is the last minute attempt by the Iranians to push the P5 plus one to another line of retreat by putting on the table um, some demands or some disagreements which we had the, uh, the um, I don't know what to say, we, we had knowledge, knowledge is a strong word, we didn't have a real knowledge, but was a, understood by many that this is behind the negotiations. And it was agreed that there would be inspection and so on and so forth. And what we see today is the, um, the last minute attempt by the Iranians um, to get better position and better circumstances. Will it, will it work? This is the main question. You know, someone which has very much appreciated, it's my uh, older um, brother, told me once that the people don't understand but the most crazy systems are democratic systems. They don't react, they agree to, to uh, negotiate, even to, they are very flexible, they don't want to go to wars and so on and so forth. But there is a line that no one knows exactly where is the line. But there is a line which they cannot cross because of the public opinion, because of their obligation to their people and so on and so forth. And too many dictatorships make a um, mistake relating to this line. It's happened to Hitler, it's happened to Saddam Hussein, it's happened to many others. I don't know enough about the character of the decision makers <coughs> in the White House to say if they are now s facing such a line that they cannot cross. Because up till today, almost everything which was demanded by the Iranians, they found creative solution, which at the end of the day satisfied the Iranians. Are they facing now the line they cannot cross? I don't know. But maybe the Iranians are doing now the biggest mistake. Instead of having good agreement, very good agreement for Iran, they try to do something that the Americans cannot swallow. And to put the Americans in the corner that if they will be there, they will not agree and they will take another option. What will be an option? It's a good question. So, if you would ask me the same question 10 days ago, I would say, without any change in the American position and the Iranians' position, you have an agreement on the table. Today, when the Iranians change their demands and disagreements with what was agreed, I'm not so sure about it. Not because the eagerness of the, of the Americans is less today than um, 10 days ago. The eagerness is there anyhow. It is very strong. As I said, stronger than the need of the, um, the Iranians, as the Iranians understand it. Stronger than the need of the Iranians to have an agreement. 
but I'm not sure that the Iranians didn't push too much to a line in which even this administration cannot agree. And this is a question that I don't have an answer to. It's a very interesting one. It will be uh, decided within days. Um, I think that the declaration of the Washington Institute was very important. If not, will be used cynically by the administration, and it might be used cynically by the administration. Uh, so now we are in the in the in the last minute of the of the uh, negotiations, facing the situation in which it is impossible from the outside, with now, without knowing all the details and what was agreed behind the curtains. Now they speak about secret uh, annex to the previous non-agreed agreement that no one knew about it. Um, uh, uh, civilian nuclear uh, reactors that should be um, sold to, to the Iranians and other, and other um, things that we don't know what is in this secret uh, annex. So um, this is the crucial time in which um, it very much depends on the, um, the way that it will be handled by the Iranians. What do I mean by that? The Iranians uh, put a bar now much higher than before in many areas. If they will reduce it only two millimeters and it will be looked from the outside that they are um, giving up, it will be easier for the administration to sell a bad agreement because it will look like we, we succeeded at the end to push the Iranians. Is it all that demand, all these demands of the Iranians is only kind of um, play to show that they are ready to, 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 um, to, boom, to be more flexible because the re that will be reduced instead of um, two meters height, it will be only one and a half and it will be look like a fantastic achievement of, of the P5 plus one. In the bazaar is part of the negotiation. I grow in Yad Eliyahu, I, all my um, uh, years I bought in, uh, in uh, uh, Shuka Tikva, I know the rules. No, I'm not in, from Jerusalem. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can tell you about the rules in, in, the, in the bazaar in Shunat Tikva. That I can tell you. What you do? You say, you know what? I cannot sell it in less than uh, two shekels. It's impossible. It cost me two shekels. I cannot sell it with less than two shekels. So the guy is leaving. He said, you know what? 180. So the other guy feels that he has a good bargain here. Yeah, and, uh, 10%. And you know that you bought it in one shekel and you have only uh, 0 0.8 and not 10 from, uh, for um, benefit. I mean, this is part of the bazaar and, and I don't know how flexible are the Iranians today because what, my, what might bring them to the big mistake is what I said at the beginning. That they feel, rightly so, that the Americans are eager to have an agreement more than they need the agreement. That might lead them to the big mistake because there is a line, which I don't know where, he, where, where the line um, um, was defined by the Americans, but there is a line that even this administration cannot cross. So this is the situation that we are facing um, today. It's a very, very, very interesting situation, I must say. Looking from the outside, um, can Israel add to the um, understanding of the other side? The question is probably not. We, we cannot interfere now in this very delicate um, situation, it's more important that it will be done by Americans, in Americans, in America, by Americans. Uh, this is the only way to influence the, because it's very much connected to the whole atmosphere in the United States of America, between the Congress, the President, the, the, the people of America, the experts in this um, area, we should not interfere. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, General Amidor, and 